We now turn our attention to football and the World Cup 2018. We're going to be taking a look at the outright betting and discussing the chances of the main protagonists in the tournament. Uh, generally, with football betting, uh, the bookmakers have a lot of data. Um, they have they have a lot of experienced guys in their football departments who watch the football closely in all leagues. They're aware of all the top players, and so their odds are usually very tight. It's it's actually tough to find value. Um, sometimes you'll get a team that stands out as being a you know a very high value price, but generally they get it right. And you've got to look to the short end of the market. I think if you're looking north of about 12 to 1, it's very difficult to find value. The winner is likely to come from one of the favourites, sort of below 12 to 1. And um, on this occasion, we've got the favourites as Brazil, who are 9 to 2, to win the tournament. Uh, Germany are available at 5 to 1. You've got Spain at 7 to 1. France at 7 to 1. Argentina 10 to 1. Belgium 11 to 1. And then you've got England 16 to 1, Portugal 25 to 1, and it continues on. I mean, I would say past that, um, it's difficult to find someone who has a good chance of winning. I have actually got a selection above 25 to 1, which I quite like, but that is as a Hail Mary selection. Um, a lot of the time, I'll have three tiers of selections. One is a short priced sort of favourite. One is a value play at a slightly bigger price. And then I'll have a Hail Mary selection, which, you know, is above, well, it's usually always above 25 to 1. I'm in other sports, but where this is football, where the odds are tight, where it's difficult to find value. Um, the Hail Mary selection is actually 33 to 1, I've spotted. But let's talk about the top end of the market. Let's talk about Brazil. They're a worthy favourite. You know all the stars, you know all the names. Neymar, we've got uh, Thiago Silva in defence. We've got Coutinho, formerly of Liverpool. Now of Barcelona, we've got Gabriel Jesus of Manchester City. We've got Willian in there, Chelsea. Casemiro, Real Madrid. Firmino, Liverpool. So Brazil's all about attacking flair, it always has been. And if you listen to some of those players we're mentioning, they've really got a lot of attacking now. And they're going to be looking to score a hat full of goals. And they're going to look to the likes of Thiago Silva to keep it tight at the back. They've also got Douglas Costa, who's also got a lot of... Um, defensive ability so they'll be looking for him to keep things tight they've got the likes of Paulinho um, they're just very strong team these are playing for the very best teams uh, in Europe in the world and uh, we've also got Fernandinho as well shoring up in the middle of the park so not only have they got the goals they've got the defensive attributes as well um, so they're going to be dangerous and they're a worthy favourite at 9-2 to you've also got Germany at 5-1 to um, they're historically so strong, organised, experienced, defensively sound, reliable in a penalty shootout if necessary. And they've just just—they've got such a strong team, they've actually announced today they're leaving out Leroy Sane of Manchester City. And he's one of the best talents in the world. If you can afford to leave out the likes of Leroy Sane, uh, Joachim Love must be very confident and he must have a tremendous squad at his disposal. They've got... Loads of superstars. We've got Tony Cross, uh, Real Madrid. You've got Muller, and obviously where they've got Bayern Munich as their best team in the country, they've obviously got a lot of talent to choose from. The thing with Germany is they're dependable. They're almost an auto selection. You know they're not gonna uh, give it away or go out early. They're very professional. Even if they play poorly, they manage to find a way. You know to eke out a one nil. They find a way to win. And that's what's so important in tournament football. is finding a way when you're not playing at your best. And that's why, as you can probably tell, I'm, I like Germany's chances from what I'm saying. Uh, obviously, Brazil have a lot of flair. They have a lot of skill. But um, Germany just have that inane ability. It's almost in their blood, it seems, or genetic, to be very professional, be very solid, and you know, just be very difficult to break down. Um, their team's very strong. We talked about Sane being left out. Um, people have talked about Carrius recently uh, after his errors in the Champions League final for Liverpool, but he's not even mentioned in the conversation for Germany goalkeeper. That's how um, high level their squad is. Um, they're able to call on a massive pool of players and um, 
they're just usually dangerous. I'll probably come back to Germany later on. They're definitely shortlisted, five to one. Next you've got Spain, seven to one. David De Gea. Manchester United, amazing goalkeeper. Cesar Aspilicueta, Chelsea. Gerard Piquet, Barcelona. Sergio Ramos, Real Madrid. Busquets, Barcelona legend. Andres Iniesta, legend of all forms of the game. World Cup winner, Andres Iniesta. World Cup winning goal scorer in 2010 in South Africa, Andres Iniesta. Um, they've got Diego Costa up top, formerly of Chelsea. Uh, dangerous forward, menacing forward, gives defenders a nightmare, very physical. They're just experienced and capable. Winners of the European Championship not so long ago, winners of the World Cup. Sergio Ramos is there in defence, just recently won the Champions League of Real Madrid, another legend. You know, they've just got players that have been around a long time, players who know what they're doing, players who've been at this level before, perform under pressure, and that's why they're worthy at 7-1. to one. Some people would even argue that there's a bit of a shade of value. Some people would expect Spain to be a similar price as Germany. Um, but 7-1 to one is a fair number, and it's definitely one not to look past or take lightly. We've got France 7-1. to one. The players are there again, the names are there. Hugo Lloris between the sticks for Tottenham. Samuel Umtiti, you know, they've this, this just got tremendous players throughout. In the midfield, Kante, Paul Pogba, up top, Griezmann, Giroud up front, uh, now of Chelsea, formerly of Arsenal. Kylian Mbappe, who was so amazing for Monaco, and then got snapped up by PSG, the young whiskered, full of skills, full of trickery, full of pace. We've got Dembele of Barcelona up top. So it's another team that's hugely blessed with players um, in the top tiers of football at the top elite clubs and 7-1, to one, I think it's reasonable. I think when you, when you see Spain 7-1 to one and France 7-1, to one, I think I, I, I like, personally, I like Spain a little bit more and it makes Spain's price look good. Um, but 7-1, to one, it's reasonable. The next selection I like a lot is probably going to be my value selection and that's Argentina. There's just too much going forward for them. That's, they've got, for me, they've got the best front line in the game, uh, in, in the tournament, sorry. In terms of their attackers, when we look at who they're boasting up front, it's just amazing. Sergio Aguero, Gonzalo Higuain, uh, Pablo Dybala, Lionel Messi, obviously. We've got Di Maria as well of PSG, formerly of Manchester United. Um, didn't have the best time at Manchester United, but we know what he's capable of. Pace and power and skill. And I just think that front line alone you know, tells you what a serious chance Argentina have. And they've also got players at the back who can keep things solid. You've got Otamendi. At the back, you've got between the sticks, it's either going to be Willy Caballero or um, Sergio Romero. So these are players we know from the Premier League. These are solid players. Um, we've also got Marcus Rojo, I forgot about him, of Manchester United. So I think they've got a chance. If they keep an eye on their defence, I think they've, they've really got a shot. I mean, Messi can 